Hello guys, welcome back once again to my channel Gamma Diagamma. Se semester has started for me and it is pretty hectic to say the least. Regardless, I have another video for my avid viewers. So let's get started. This video is particularly interesting. Not that the ones were before this weren't interesting, but you will really find this riveting. So consider I to be integral from zero to one half of natural log of Riemann zeta of z divided by, maybe I should use square brackets, Riemann zeta of 1 minus z dz so what are we gonna do here is well we can't really do anything directly what we can do however is recall the functional equation for the Riemann zeta function if you watch that old video of mine, that's two to the z pi to the z minus one sine of pi z over two, the gamma of one minus z, and the Riemann zeta of one minus z. So we can take the ratio of these things to end up with finally i is integral from zero to one half, just the natural log of the ratio that you obtain. So that's going to be 2 to the z pi to the z minus 1 sine of pi z over 2 gamma of 1 minus z with the dz. Now the simplest way of tackling this is to break it up into a bunch of integrals. By linearity we therefore have natural log of 2 to the z, maybe I can write this a little better over there, natural log of 2 to the z plus natural log of pi times z minus uh, to the z minus 1 plus natural log of sine pi z over 2 plus natural log of gamma of 1 minus z dz we can split everything up into a bunch of integrals so there's going to be effectively four integrals we have to consider separately i1 well the first two ones are pretty easy because natural log of 2 will come out it's just integral from one zero to one half of z dz which is natural log of 2 over 8 or rather if you, if you don't want me to skip any steps z squared over 2 from 0 to 1 half natural log of 2 over 8. With the same spirit, we can uh, evaluate what I2 is going to be. So I2 is going to be similarly natural log of pi integral from 0 to 1 z minus 1 dz. So that's natural log of pi z squared over 2 minus z 0 to 1 half which should give me basically natural log of pi 1 8 minus 1 half I believe which is negative 3 8 natural log of pi fair enough fair. it's not it's not too uh, unconvincing yet so I3 integral from 0 to 1 half natural log of sine of pi z over 2 dz. Now what I would like to do here is use a substitution u equals pi z over 2 such that du is pi over 2 dz and our integral is therefore going to be integral from 0 to pi over 4 
natural log of sine of u and dz is 2 over pi du. Well, the thing is, we've already evaluated what the integral is in a past video of the Circus of Integrals playlist. I, c I probably can add a card. So we have minus Catalan's constant over 2 minus pi over 4 natural log of 2 as the answer for that integral, which we can nicely simplify to be minus Catalan's constant over pi minus natural log of 2 divided by 2. So it, the integral that we were solving didn't seem that ugly, but what we got is a little horrid. We have Catalan's constant, which is an un indeterminate transcendental slash uh, irrational number. So yeah. It's, it's stuff that looks simple can, you know, turn out to be quite ugly as I'm sure you've experienced in the past and also now. So I four integral from zero to one half natural log of gamma of one minus Z DZ. Well, same as before U is one minus Z DU is negative DZ and we're going to get integral from one half to one of natural log of gamma of u du. Well, I urge you to now consider what we've al always used or al always known. The derivative of the natural log of gamma is a really function that is dear to my heart because it's also the, in the name of the channel, the di gamma of u. Or in other words, Di gamma or the minus one derivative of di gamma, which is basically going to be the integral of di gamma is going to be natural log of gamma just by the definition on top and then the fundamental theorem of calculus. So the minus tooth derivative, the minus second derivative of gamma is basically going to be the integral of this guy. You take a negative derivative. That's the same as taking the anti derivative, which is an indefinite integral. So this is, we can use this kind of notation to work what the I, I4 is going to be. So I4 with the notation we used is minus second derivative of gamma of u evaluated from one and one half. So we can just write this out as a difference. Okay, so now now it is really time to introduce something new. It's called the, the balanced polygamma function. So the idea is simple. It just sounds all cool. It sounds all, you know, physic, physics y. It's really not. So the mth derivative of gamma of z. Well, just write that, which is also the m plus first derivative or maybe we should use z here of uh, natural log of gamma of z we can express this as di gamma of m semicolon z so this is precisely the balanced polygamma so we can we can uh, make note of some particular values that we should be concerned with for this question. This will be one half natural log of two pi uh, balanced polygamma of minus two one half is going to be a quite a, a long thing. One fourth natural log of pi plus three by two natural log of the glacier King Kellen constant. 5 over 24 with a natural log of 2. Well, you guys, you, you, you might get some flashbacks to the Glacier King Kellen constant. It was part of the one of the earliest videos I made on the evaluation of a non trivial infinite series. 
well turns out we we have to use it again it's one of the you know constants that you know it's hard to derive it or you know come across it because it's the result of several really complicated looking expressions or uh, series or infinite products so i4 is just simply the balanced poly gamma minus 2 1 minus balanced poly gamma of minus 2 1 half which whose values we've noted precisely 1 half natural log of 2 pi minus 1 fourth natural log of pi it's unlikely i will make a video proving that these things are you know the, the values are what they are because it's just a little non trivial and might not be enjoyable neither for me and nor for the viewers because it might be like really really freaking long 7 by 24 natural log of 2 i'm just simplifying everything plus 1/4 natural log of pi just just mind numbing algebra trust me 3 by 2 natural log of the glacier king kelvin constant which we can write in this really tacky looking way natural log of 2 to the 7 by 24 pi to the 1/4 over a to the 3 by 2 there we go that is i4 precisely we now we now have all the pieces we need and now it is time to combine everything so i is going to be i1 plus i2 i3 and i4 all the individual integral components minus g over pi Minus natural log of two to the one half plus uh, natural log of two to the one eight three by eight natural log of pi and then this uh, monstrous expression I think this expression is probably why I I said this video is going to be a little more interesting. Cuz look at look at the number of constants there's a catlans constant that's that is there that's like the our a permanent evil and then there's the old friend of ours glacier king kelvin constant which is even uglier so it's literally the good the bad and the ugly so the pi is the good the catlans constant is the bad and the ugly is the glacier king kelvin constant that i'm currently writing in the denominator of the argument of the natural log and now nothing else can be said nothing else can be done but mind numbing algebra natural log of 2 to the 1/12 pi to the 1/8 it's just a law of indices and glacier king kelvin to the 3 halves and there we go that should be the answer I would give you uh, a challenge. Try to, you know, sort of find as many places, uh, numerical places, numerical uh, decimal point places you can find for this monstrous numerical constant. And yeah, so this the only key thing here was noticing that we can use the. the functional equation of the riemann zeta function which is precisely in this form because of the z1 minus z symmetry and then everything else was basically a partial of what we knew and what we've done before like the sine integral do watch that video it's really simple just um the taylor series of the natural law after we expand the So I write the sign as a difference of exponentials using Euler's identity, and then everything else is sort of given to us via the balanced poly gamma function, and then of course we come across our, our old friend the Glacier King Kelvin constant. So that's it for this video, guys. Please like and subscribe to my channel. I'm working really hard to you know manage school, which has. a lot of heavy, heavy curriculum and i'm i'm also managing this my channel so it really helps me on a personal emotional and monetary basis too if i get more public watch hours i can monetize and you guys will have better stuff to look forward to so peace out and thanks for watching